Hey guys, how's it going? So we're gonna be working in the vegetable garden today, planting some spring crops. So some of those vegetable plants that can withstand colder temperatures like carrots, beets, peas, lettuce, spinach, onions, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. What else, am, what else is there? I know I'm forgetting some stuff. There's leeks and chives, that's an herb. Um, you could also do kale and Swiss chard right now as well. And it will all depend on your area. Like right now, it's a great time where our temperatures during the day are high 50s, low 60s, and we're not freezing at night anymore. Um, so some years we're able to start as early as February, some years it's into April. So it just, it'll vary depending on your weather. Um, but I do have a stack of seeds here and I also have a box full of plants that I'm hoping to get in the ground. Some of these things I'm gonna be putting some protective caps over and I'll show you that. Um, some things I won't have to worry about. So what I'm starting from seed today are, whoa, if I don't drop it everywhere, Oregon sugar pod peas, which I got out of the bulk bin down at Andrews. In fact, I, this is the only seed I had to run down this morning and get some of these, so I was all prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna be doing bull's blood beets, winter giant spinach, French bread, French bread, French breakfast radishes, Danvers half long carrots, cherry bell radishes, and then I do have a bunch of lettuces. These are the two main ones I'm gonna be doing, red romaine and tom thumb. And then in plants, I have two different kinds of onions. I've got candy onions, walla walla onions, which this is what I grew primarily, like only. This is the only type of onion I grew last year and they were huge and delicious. These don't store quite as long as the other ones do though. I've also got Brussels sprouts, Copenhagen market cabbage, and gypsy broccoli. So we have a lot to do out there. Um, the only other thing that I have gathered up is my tools. So I've got a couple of my hand tools. I'm not gonna be tilling today. And then I've got um, a couple part bags of Biotone I want to just get emptied out. And then I got a big bag of Biotone, a fresh one. So let's run out to the garden and I'll show you the space and kind of what I'm thinking. I don't even know what I'm thinking, honestly. I haven't even sketched this out. I have no idea where anything's to be planted. I'm so organized. We had a nice windstorm the other night and this is what always happens underneath our willow tree. All right, so here we are. Everything is pretty cleared out. I did bring my A-frame trellis. I got this from Gardener Supply last year. I think it's called a metal A-frame. I can't remember, we'll link it down below. Um, but I grew my cantaloupe on it and it was amazing. So I think I'm gonna do my peas. They're not to like pull peas, but they do benefit from staking because they'll get, like this will go all the way into the ground to here. My peas will almost reach the top. And then I've got some caps, which I also got from Gardener Supply. They look like that. So there's not a lot going on in here right now. I do have Italian garlic here coming up, looking good. I've got one Italian garlic left from last year, I <laughs> must have missed. I've got carrots I'm gonna pull up and give to the chickens today. I've got some lettuce I seeded last, like late summer, and spinach, which is looking good. I'll just leave that. There's a few strawberries and a weed. Excellent. And what else? I've got a few strawberries in here and we've got another bed full of garlic. Ooh, and chives, look at that. Yum. I'm also gonna be switching out all of my irrigation tubing in here this year. I'm not gonna do it today because I don't have the right supplies, but last year I used this quarter inch soaker hose, which worked great. Like my, my garden has always performed really well in this spot, but I feel like it takes forever to get full saturation with these soaker hoses. I have to let the zone in this garden go for so long um, that it really robs from the rest of the garden time-wise. So I need to make it more efficient to where um, I don't have to run this zone as long. So I think I'm going to swap over to the quarter inch that has emitter holes every six inches. I think that will work a little bit quicker. So that is the plan. So today these are all just gonna still be here so I can still water, um, but we'll do irrigation another day. I also wanted to give you guys an update on the soil in here because if you remember, I brought a bun bunch of leaves in here to act as kind of a mulch and just to let them break down. And it's crazy. Even with the amount of moisture we did not get this winter, the leaves like really did start to break down. I mean, the soil in here, they'll incorporate beautifully into it. And I, that's why I feel like I don't need to till. I mean, it's just, look at that. 
that is gorgeous soil. So I'm just gonna be applying biotone to each one of the areas I'm planting and that's it. See how the leaves kind of created that mat? I love it. <laughs> Come here, bud. Come on. Do you wanna play in the dirt right here? Look, you can grab big pieces of it like that. You just want the camera. You're like daddy. Huh, you are just like daddy. That's okay. You wanna give him a tour? Don't turn it off, bud. Don't touch that one. Go point the camera at stuff. See it in the screen? Whatever you point it at, that's what it films. Do you wanna show him my garlic? You wanna point it at the garlic and show him the weeds that are growing? See that? We've got some weeds and some beautiful looking garlic that we will harvest for around 4th of July. Good job, buddy. Mama, you are so good at that, bud. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of time and kind of organize my thoughts and decide where everything needs to go. I'm gonna dig the carrots out and then we'll show you as I plant everything and in the end, I'll give you kind of a grand tour. I don't know if grand is the word this time of year. <laughs> I had to wash this one you guys just to see what it looks like because it came out of the ground like this. I wish I would have got the whole thing, it broke off. But doesn't that look like intestines? That is the grossest thing ever. So these carrots were in the ground way too long. Gah. It got warm out here. I think this stuff is gonna start growing really fast. I got everything planted that I wanted to here in the garden space. I do have one other area I want to go plant in, but we'll do that in a second. 
Aaron is fertilizing all the arborvitas with plantone right now. But I wanna give you a tour of what's in this space and then we're gonna to head to the Versailles garden. I did get everything watered in as well and then I went around and applied this to the raised beds I just worked up that are nice and fluffy and loose and like the perfect place for a cat to use. And these don't typically get used by the cats as a litter box, thankfully, but they love to lay in them. <laughs> so I'm hoping to keep them out of the boxes at least until stuff is up and growing and a little bit more established and not babies. So in this first bed right here, you can see the strawberries that are lining the edges. Those are the buried treasure red, and I hope to plant a whole bed full of those this year. In fact, the only beds that have nothing in them are the four three by six beds. So there's two on this end of the garden and two over there on that end. So I did a mixture of Valentine and iceberg lettuce in here that I'm just gonna use as baby greens. And I didn't even plant them in rows. I just scattered the seed around in that one. Um, of course, we've got the garlic in this bed, which there's a close up right there. And then in this bed over here, I've got Walla Walla onions and I was able to fit almost all of them in this half of the bed. I had to pop a few over, over here, I'll show you in a second. And then this whole side is filled with bull's blood beets, which there are four rows in there. So in this bed, you can see the leftover onions kind of in that corner, there were nine left. And then we have the greens that were already here. There's the gypsy broccoli. And then we have three rows of the winter spinach and then some more strawberries there. Then we've got the Copenhagen Market uh, cabbage. There's four of them in this bed. And these are the candy onions. And I was able to fit every single one of those in this bed. And I do them about like every four inches or so. And they will look a little floppy and kind of sad for just a little bit until they get rooted in and then they'll just pick up and start growing like mad. Okay, so in this bed I have two different kinds of radishes, which I don't even love radishes, but they're so fast. Like if you are a beginner gardener, start with radishes. They are so easy to grow and so quick. So we have cherry bell right here. There are three little rows and then three rows of French breakfast. And then I've got a little area of Brussels sprouts right there. And then we've got the Danvers carrots in this bed, which I added in a lot of gypsum too, to these two beds in particular, because it feels like every year these get really compacted. And I think that's why I get some weird shaped carrots and the gypsum helps condition the soil, helps break up hard pan. So I added that in addition to the Biotone fertilizer into some of the raised beds. And then these two right here are empty, ready for something else. And we've got garlic in this bed and organ sugar pod peas in this one. Okay, so the last two things I wanna plant are the tom thumb lettuce and the red romaine lettuce up in Versailles. I'm gonna go grab a rake really quick and I need it for some soil fluffage. So this is the spot. So you know that typically I plant these little corner areas up in the summertime, but we have a couple months between now and when I'm ready to plant. So I figured it would be fun to just throw some seed in there and see what happens. I mean, I spent $8 to buy this lettuce seed, so I'm really not out much. Um, we have the water on now. In fact, Aaron just fertilized the grass, so he's gonna turn it on as soon as I'm done planting the lettuce so I can see what kind of coverage we get here. But I shouldn't even have to drag a hose out to water this seed. Um, so I've got the two different varieties. I'm going to do the opposite corners. So these two right here will be red romaine and the other two will be the Tom Thumb Butterhead Lettuce. So two corners green, two corners red. I love it when I see vegetables and things like that worked into flower beds anyway. I, there's something like kind of whimsical about it. Um, so I think it's going to be a fun experiment and we may eat some of it like oh, I'm sure we will throughout the next few weeks once it's up. But in the end, when I'm ready to plant the super tunias, I really want to get a roll of chicken wire to just unroll around this circle and then put the chickens in there and let them go to town. I think they would love it. So what I'm going to do is scatter the seed out on top of the soil and then I'm going to rake it very lightly with this right here because you really don't want to cover lettuce much uh, and then we're going to water it in.
I might go grab a few pieces of the Harvest Guard, which is that really thin white gauzy material just to drape on the soil. Um, and that'll help the lettuce come up a lot quicker. It'll help maintain heat. And if we have any nights that are really, really extra cold, it'll help protect anything that's new and tender down in there, like tender growth, from any kind of damage. But lettuce typically can take quite a bit of cold. Um, and it's safe right now in our area to plant all the things that I planted today. Um, I do need to go put those domes. I think I showed you those clear domes that I'm gonna be putting over the Brussels sprouts broccoli and cabbage since they've never stayed out of a greenhouse for a full night in our cold temperatures I'll probably dome them for the next like maybe week or so at least for the evenings just to where, where they're hardened off and they're ready to kind of withstand those cold temps but anyway it always feels good to get the first round of crops going in the garden and like you saw I still have those four raised beds that are completely empty and they may, might stay that way until I'm ready for summer stuff because my spring stuff always lasts like a little ways into uh, summer and I'm always like not really ready to pull that stuff out when I'm ready to plant like my tomatoes peppers and beans and things like that so it's always nice to have some available space so who knows what we'll end up doing but I'm really excited to see this stuff grow and show you guys updates as we go um yeah I hope this video was fun to watch I feel like I got a lot done today it always feels good to get those like extra spring projects done so anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope you're all having a really peaceful day and we'll see you in the next video Bye.